Hello, students. Very good afternoon. So it's already like few minutes late. So I'll directly jump into the session. So please let me know, like, if you have any problems with technical issues such as uh, audio or video problems, so that we can fix it uh, during the class hours. Okay. So yesterday we were talking about breathing and exchange of glass uh, gases, and we solved all these questions. So after a brief introduction, we were almost near the structure of lungs, right? So, yeah. So the position, like anatomical location of the lungs and how, uh, you know, it functions. So we'll start from here. So as I was saying, the respiratory system contains, right? It starts from the nostrils and then it goes all the way till your alveoli. So the lungs are... Uh, paired structures and they're very very important for you know the entire respiratory process that happens why because it is a physiological zone for gases exchange okay so now what is the position of the lungs so since the lungs are very sensitive they are situated in the thoracic chamber so the thoracic chamber uh, is a very airtight chamber i can tell so now if you see what is thoracic chamber that is made up of so the so thoracic chamber is dorsally it is supported by a uh, vertebral column and if you see when uh, ventrally it is supported by sternum sternum is also called as the breast bone okay so now if you talk about this entire thoracic cavity the entire thoracic cavity is like a cage right it's a thoracic cage which is made up by certain ribs so the ribs are interconnected by intercostal muscles okay external intercostal muscles and internal intercostal muscles Okay, so on the, the posterior side of this thoracic cavity, you have a dome shaped structure. This is called as the diaphragm. Okay, so when we talk about respiration, and uh, we know that lungs are very, very important to perform the, uh, you know, the function of respiration, uh, like especially exchange of gases, not respiration. So, a lungs alone cannot do this function and moreover uh, for every human being so as we grow up at maturity we will at least breathe 12 to 16 times per minute and uh, you know throughout the day it's going to be several hundred times okay so during this process of breathing in and breathing out okay if it is done very mechanically it would consume a very lot of energy but if you spend a lot of energy in just uh, just for you know breathing, then our body will lose a tremendous amount of it, and then it will not be able to supplement this process you know very effectively. That is why the accessory muscles like the uh, you know ring-like structures, what do you tell the septal cartilage in your trachea, okay, the external intercostal muscles and the internal intercostal muscles between the ribs the diaphragm and the thoracic pressure all of these play a very important role in helping the lungs to gain the air or lose the air okay so let's see so what is uh, see when we talk about the entire respiratory system there are two important zones okay one is the conduction zone other one is your uh, you know respiration zone okay so here what happens in conduction zone conduction zone is when you take in the air, the air enters through the nose. Okay, let us go here. Okay. The air enters through the nose and through the nose, it goes through the pharynx and then it will enter the trachea and through trachea, it is going to enter the lungs. So, if you see the structure of all these parts, it is very well lined with, you know, respiratory mucosal cells. So, this respiratory mucosal cells, they separate respiratory mucosa. So, the, there is very high amount of respiratory mucosa and here, this respiratory mucosa is very, very important because as the air moves inwards, it will humidify the air and it will try to bring the air to the appropriate temperature, okay, body temperature. So, we know that for the movement of gases, temperature and pressure are very important factors that influence their movement, right? So, even though if it is diffusion, so... Uh, that is why the pro pro to maintain the appropriate temperature, mm -hmm. these structures will help. Okay. Now, if you see the other part of the same structures, see the entire uh, respiratory tract is lined up by a specialized cells called a pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Okay, I'll write it as here. Pseudo 
stratified stratified columnar epithelium okay so here what does these uh, cells do they are ciliated right pseudo stratified okay i forgot ciliated i'll write this okay so the ciliated cells they line the entire respiratory tract like even the bronchi and the bronchioles are lined by these cells so in the conduction zone only okay here what is happening all the dust and debris that are in your uh, in your respiratory tract okay the cilia like structures or hair like structures that is present in these cells they will start beating towards one particular direction so along with the mucus all the dust and unwanted particles that has entered your respiratory tract will be moved upward to your throat. So here it will come as putum, okay, along with your mucus, your dust and antigens and everything will be there. So now you are given a choice, whether you swallow it or whether you spit it, okay. So that is the other thing. Next one is the site of gaseous exchange. So when you talk about the site of gaseous exchange, it happens in alveoli, right? So at the terminal bronchi, we have a sac-like structures called as alveolar sacs. So if you see the alveolar sac, alveolar sac is very, very thin line structure, okay, and it is richly supplied with blood capillaries, okay. So if you see alveoli, in alveoli, there are two, two types of cells, okay, type 1 alveoli, okay, we have type 1 uh, alveoli, and then we have type 2 alveoli, okay, type 2 alveoli. So what is this type 1 and type 2 alveoli? If you take type 1 alveoli, type 1 alveoli will produce a type of surfactant, okay, it will produce a type of surfactant, I'll write it here. So what is surfactant? Surfact yeah. Surfactant is mostly what happens, these, these substances, they, they are like proteins, okay, they react with water and they will make the uh, alveolar surface very very slimy okay very very uh, lubricated so these are called as surfactants now why the surfactants are necessary whenever the breathing is happening right whether it is dry air or because of your respiratory rate or breathing rate is very very high so the lungs will expand and contract or you know all this right Students, can you hear me? Am I audible? So I hope I, I, I recognize at the right moment. So I'll continue. One second. I'll just see. Yes, fine. Thank you. Uh, yeah. 
So let's go ahead. Okay. So now type two alveolar cells, what do they do? They are involved in gases exchange, right? So uh, we studied about what are the different, uh, different parts in your uh, respiratory system and how they participate in gas exchange, right? So now not only your alveoli is made up of alveolar cells, they are also made up of richly supplied, uh, you know, uh, uh, arterial capillaries, venule capillaries, lymphoid tissue, okay? And also there are, there are macrophages. So these uh, macrophages are a type of WBCs, which will be roaming around this alveolar sac, trying to scavenge for any possible antigens that has entered in your lungs. Okay, fine. So let's see more about respiratory system. So we have two important things. First, what is breathing? Uh, breathing is also called as pulmonary ventilation. So it is uh, majorly uh, just, it's merely a physical process, I can tell. So here, what is happening? First, an atmospheric air is drawn in and uh, carbon dioxide that is rich in the alveoli is released out. It's very, very simple. Okay, we take in air and we, re we release carbon dioxide, as simple as that. So during this breathing, what is happening? Diffusion of gases takes place. So what are the important gases? So oxygen is very, very important for the tissues. That is why whatever the air we take in, okay, it, it contains more concentration of oxygen because it is from the atmosphere. So this uh, oxygen-rich air, which is taken into the lungs, it will cross the alveolar barrier. It will enter into your blood and the oxygen gets carried by the blood, okay, where the oxygen is picked up by the hemoglobin, okay, protein that is present in your red blood cells, and it will go all the way to into your heart, and from the heart, it will go to the rest of the body. When it goes to the rest of the body, at the see, if you see, for example, this is your lungs, I'll write it here, this is lungs, uh, sorry, yeah, this is lungs, and then this is blood, I will write here, heart, and then we have body, body or I will write it as tissue, okay, body or tissue, and from body or tissue, again, it will go to blood, from blood, again, heart, correct, and from heart, again, it has to come back to lungs, it's a cycle. Okay, now what's happening? Now we take in air. Sorry, now we oh. now we take in air. Now when we take in air, now what is the air rich in? Air is rich in oxygen, right? So since the air is rich in oxygen, the you know oxygen gets diffused into the blood, and red blood cells will pick up this oxygen, and then it will go to the heart, and from heart it is pumped to the body or tissues. Near the tissues or the cells, since the tissues have high demand for oxygen, the concentration of oxygen inside the tissues are very, very less or the cells are very, very less. That is why the oxygen concentration, which is very, very high in the blood, okay, it's okay, which is very, very high in the blood, it moves from the blood, okay, I'll write it here, blood O2, from the blood, it will move into the cells. Once it goes into the cells, from the blood, you know, the tissues are already performing the process of respir uh, you know, respiration. So that is why the tissues will release carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide is pick up, picked up by the blood. And from blood, it will go back to the heart. Again, the carbon dioxide rich blood from the heart, it will go to the lungs. And from lungs, it is expelled out. So this is a cycle of breathing. Okay. So now, if we have to just... Uh, uh, you know, conclude uh, uh, breathing, we can just put it in two different, uh, you know, uh, two different important, uh, I mean, like two important functions I can tell. What is the two important thing that is happening? One is inspiration and expiration. So the gap between, you know, the from the time you inspire and expire, this process is called as breathing, right? That is the two stages of breathing. So here, when we talk about inspiration, atmospheric air is drawn in. What is expiration? Alveolar air that is rich in carbon dioxide is released out. But it is not that simple. Correct, no? So whenever in, we inspire, if we just see the picture of, uh, you know, if you just see how our lungs expand while we breathe and how it contracts while we uh, expire out, right? So we understand that it's not just lungs. Can you believe how much of energy would be required if you had to forcefully fill the, uh, fill the air into your lungs? 
right? Like while we try to fill the air in the balloon, it's so hard, right? So after the more and more you fill, the more harder it gets because of the pressure that is coming from the opposite direction. So that is why our body cannot spend a lot of energy for this purpose. All right. So accessory muscles and along with a simple physics, our organisms have developed a very, very, uh, you know, um, very, very efficient machine for especially breathing. Now, what is happening in uh, breathing process? First one, in the process of inspiration, right? In the process of inspiration, what's happening? First of all, the pressure that is within the lungs, okay, are very, very important. So, this pressure is called as intrapulmonary pressure. So, the pressure within the lungs has to be very, very less. Okay, so whenever it is less, so compared to what? Whenever the intrapulmonary pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure, okay? Atmosphere pressure should have more air pressure and then your lungs, within the lungs, the uh, amount of pressure should be very, very less. So because there is a change in the pressure, this will create negative pressure. So since it, uh, there, there is a creation of negative pressure, now the air from the atmosphere starts entering into the lungs. Okay, fine. Now, what happens during inspiration? On who initiates inspiration? So whenever the in in inspiration is initiated, we'll talk about the uh, signaling mechanism of inspiration. Okay, so whenever inspiration is initiated, okay, now what happens? Contraction of certain important uh, sets of muscles will take place. First one, if you see the position, anatomical position of your lungs, I told you below, just below, in the, in the lower thoracic cavity, you have a dome-shaped structure called as diaphragm, correct? So this diaphragm, what it will do, it will contract and as it contracts, it will start moving towards the, uh, you know, posterior, uh, uh, you know, posterior ventral axis. So as it moves, you know, you know sorry, anterior posterior axis, as it moves down, Okay, it will create, uh, you know, more, uh, it will create a, a more uh, thoracic volume. So, as it increases the more thoracic volume, okay, now it will help the air. It's just like, you know, pump. Uh, as you pump, you know, the air starts moving inside, isn't it, if you suck. Similarly, as the diaphragm moves downward, it leads to the increase in, uh, you know, volume of thoracic chamber. So what is volume of thoracic chamber? There is creating more space, correct, isn't it? When more space is created, that means the volume for, you know, air to come in has increased, right? So that is called as uh, thoracic volume. So as it does, now what will happen? It can, the air can pass inside. And the other important thing that is affecting here is the contraction of external intercostal muscles. So what are intercostal muscles? I told you these are the muscles that are, Okay, elastic in nature and are present between your uh, ribs. Okay, so here we have two types of uh, uh, intercostal muscles. One is internal intercostal muscles and you have external intercostal muscles. Now these external intercostal muscles, they contract, they become smaller. As it contracts, now what will happen? Your chest will move upward and forward. Okay, the chest will move upward and forward. Here, as the diaphragm moves, the chest will be pulled upward. Understood? So, when these two things happen, that will overall, you know, overall result in increased, okay, increased thoracic volume or increased volume of thoracic chamber. So, that will lead to inspiration, okay? You can take a look at this. See how the diaphragm is contracting and it is going towards, uh, you know, lower, okay, posteriorly how it goes down. And then you can see the external intercostal muscles. Look at this. So the external intercostal muscles will actually contract so that the air will pass inside. Understood? Fine. So now when we talk about the overall increase in thoracic cavity, okay, one second. Yeah. So that will lead to the increase in pulmonary volume. And whenever there is increase in pulmonary volume, that will lead to decrease in intrapulmonary pressure so than the atmospheric pressure which forces the air from to move from outside to the inside of the lungs so what's happening it to, to simply put it first one when you expand something okay when, when it contracts 
and then your external intercostal muscles you know move upward your thoracic cage which was like this your rib cage which was like this it became bigger and it started moving upward so whenever it became bigger and it started moving upward now what is it resulting in it resulting in change in volume so what is this volume called as thoracic volume isn't it we call it as thoracic volume so once the thoracic volume changes now what does it lead to so since there is increase in this volume the increased volume will lead to the increase you know intra pulmonary pressure to also uh, to decrease less than the atmospheric pressure so once your intra pulmonary pressure decrease than the atmospheric pressure more and more now it will force the air to come from outside to the inside of the lungs clear so this is the mechanism of inspiration very simple diaphragm and external intercostal muscles so fine so when we talk about uh, uh, the air and the air the movement of air in and out of the lungs majority of this respiration depends upon the pressure gradient okay so the pressure gradient is created between the atmosphere or you know the environment in the lungs as well as the atmosphere okay next one diaphragm and external and intercostal and internal intercostal muscles are accessory structures which help in respiration to take place especially breathing to take place so as i said on an average human they breathe up to 12 to 16 times a uh, times a minute okay so let us see the other aspect the other aspect of breathing is uh, expiration so what is happening in expiration now once the air has successfully entered into your thoracic chamber or thoracic cavity uh, or your lungs now what is happening here uh, now the air has to come out from the lungs to the outside right to the outside of the atmosphere now how does it happen first as the air gets filled up and more you know it, it keeps on increasing because there is a exchange of gases so as the carbon dioxide concentration keep on increasing within your lungs intra pulmonary pressure becomes higher and higher correct so it becomes higher than what atmospheric pressure in inspiration case the intra pulmonary pressure was lower than the atmospheric pressure that's why air came from atmosphere to the lungs here what is happening the intra pulmonary pressure is actually higher than the atmospheric pressure now that is what leads to the uh, expiration process okay so now what's happening see Uh, when the brain recognizes that there is a high increase in carbon dioxide concentration it will signal uh, you know usually it will keep signaling your external intercostal muscles and diaphragm to contract right so that is a signal see you have to contract so now once your carbon dioxide concentration increases in the brain it will cut down this signal when the signal is cut down now there is nobody to tell these muscles to contract or relax so when there is no signal they will start relaxing whenever this diaphragm and external uh, internal intercostal muscles return to their normality okay to the relaxed state now this will create uh, you know the pressure the the walls of this thoracic chamber will start crushing your lungs now once it is pressed okay once the lungs are crushed now what will happen your thoracic volume actually increases correct no your thoracic volume will increase once again your thoracic volume will increase and thereby pulmonary volume so once this is happening the increase in intra pulmonary pressure is very high uh, is above the atmospheric pressure now once there is like crushing thing that is happening now expiration will take place see when we expire sometimes whenever we want to meditate or whenever we want to do pranayam okay or whenever we want to do force expiration see in a normal expiration you have your just a uh, you know collapse you can tell uh, or relaxation of diaphragm or uh, external and intercostal muscles are happening so if you have to do forced expiration you will squeeze even more whenever you apply more pressure for the expiration to happen your even the trachea helps in expiration so all this okay intertracheal uh, cartilage muscles are there no so they will try try to you know compress when they try to compress like this so more air is expelled out through expiration okay so give me one second students one, we have one more ten, uh, we, sorry we have 10 more minutes uh, i will try to teach one more topic in 10 minutes okay fine fine i will share one more 
topic. Please be patient. Uh, one second. Mm. Okay, hold on. Okay. I want you to take a look at this. Okay. You can see the slide now. All right. Guys, can you see the slide? Is it clear? Please let me know about it. Okay. Do you guys have any doubt till now? So can I continue? Yes, thank you. So if you have any doubts, you can put it in the chat box, okay? So this is what is mechanism of breathing, like how the diaphragm contracts and uh, in external intermocal coastal muscles also contract. That will lead to the contraction of diaphragm will lead to the, uh, you know, movement of diaphragm in anterior posterior axis, anterior and posterior axis, it actually moves. And then what happens? The diaphragm will increase the thoracic, uh, you know, thoracic volume. Now here, ribs and sternum also lift up and your ribs like move upward and forward. So that will lead to increase, you know, in, in the dorsoventral axis also increases. So as your thoracic volume increases, your thoracic pressure decreases. So that will lead to what? Uh, you know, lungs expand and the pulmonary volume increases. So uh, when the pulmonary volume increases, intrapulmonary pressure decreases, that will lead for the air to move from outside to the inside of the lungs. If you just imagine this in your mind and map it, it's very, very easy. Okay, so next one in the expiration process, what happens whenever there is, uh, you know, the brain stops telling your uh, intercostal muscles as well as diaphragm to contract. So now they start relaxing. When they start relaxing, the thoracic, uh, you know, cavity regains its original position. Whenever it is crushing, the thoracic volume decreases. When thoracic volume decreases, pulmonary volume decreases. So that will lead for the air to expel out. Okay, so so many other abdominal muscles you have your external internal intercostal muscles external intercostal muscles okay and the muscles that are between your you know septal cartilage all of them help in respiration it's not just lungs okay accessory uh, uh, organs are very very important for respiration so that is why you can see in athletes and all in swimmers you can see they have a very broad chest uh, okay so that is because uh, they have trained their muscles to, you know, support their uh, uh, demand for air. Okay. So now uh, the other important topic that we have to talk about is respiratory vol volumes. So there is a lot of explanation to it. Actually, uh, what do we do? Fine. Um, I think we can stop here and we can take up in the next class. So we'll start from the respiratory volumes itself. So because we can connect this respiratory volumes to the other topics, okay? Is it clear, students? So I'll stop the session now. So if you have any doubts, please let me know in the chat box and the students from YouTube also, you can please let me know. Like if you have any doubts. Okay, thank you guys. Okay, students, I will end the session. Bye-bye, uh, take care, uh, have a nice day. But if you have any doubts in the next session, you can put it in the chat box at the beginning of the session only. So we are, human physiology is quite interesting. So please try to interact more so that you will understand, we'll get to understand better. And uh, even we will feel like teaching more when you ask more and more doubts irrespective, okay? Uh, thank you, take care, okay, bye-bye.